63 days until November's presidential election, and the question is looming. Will the Postal Service be able to handle a surge in mail-in ballots? We decided to put the post office to the test. Here's senior investigator Stephen Stock with what he found. With all the focus on vote by mail this election season, we teamed with NBC and Telemundo owned stations around the country, along with NBC LX. 12 stations in all sending more than 100 letters to test and see whether the U.S. Postal Service really delivers. From our houses and offices to locations across the country, our NBC and Telemundo investigative teams sent 155 letters to 23 different cities, all on Friday, August 14th. I filled out, hand wrote, and mailed four different letters to staff here at NBC Bay Area. I also mailed another four of the exact same letters to my colleagues at NBC4 in Los Angeles. Then I sent another four separate letters to the homes of investigative colleagues living around Miami, Dallas, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., dropping all the letters in the mail in San Jose, and then I waited. We did this to simulate the delivery of November ballots sent through the mail, all because some critics of vote by mail led by President Trump have claimed publicly many times they don't believe the U.S. Postal Service can handle tens of millions of expected ballots. While many Democrats accused Trump's new Postmaster General Louis DeJoy of intentionally slowing the mail to affect November's election. There's no question that the policies that change transportation runs has slowed down the mail. There's no Mark Diamondstein is national president of the American Postal Workers Union based in Washington, D.C. He says the removal of 670 sorting machines nationwide and a reduction in overtime hours has meant a sharp drop off in delivery service. If the mail is there to be worked and you just arbitrarily reduce hours, then guess what? The mail doesn't get worked. The taking out of some of the sorting machines we think is ill-timed because COVID has affected mail. But our test found that so far, those issues did not seem to seriously impact delivery of our mail at all. The post office advertises that first-class mail should arrive within one to three business days, and we found that's true in all but a few cases. Every letter we sent within the Bay Area arrived within two business days. From here to L.A., the average delivery time was just over three days, although one letter took five days to arrive. And in the other 20 cities we tested, the average delivery time was just two and a half days. Of the 155 letters we sent, only two mailed across state lines, about 1%, never made it. And that would only affect absentee ballots for residents currently living out of state. One letter was initially delivered to the wrong address, but that was corrected. Does that surprise you? Ernie Arenaga is president of the local 193 branch of the National Association of Letter Carriers, serving all of Santa Clara County. The infrastructure is in place where we can pretty much get mail from the East Coast to the West Coast in, in you know, a reasonable amount of time. Vote by mail, first of all, is a safe and secure election model. Jim Arizari oversees elections in San Mateo County, where they've been using exclusively mail-in ballot systems for years now. This will be the fifth election to use vote by mail. We've gotten them within two, three days, at the most five days. Surprise you? No surprises whatsoever. Uh, we've been meeting with the U.S. Postal Service representatives already for a couple of months in preparation for this election. You would acknowledge, though, the country's watching right now, are they not? The country is watching, but I think that everybody needs to feel safe and secure in this process. Uh, this is not our first rodeo. It's not the United States Postal Service first rodeo. Can the mail carriers deliver? Can the post office deliver these 100 million or more mail-in ballots? Are you up to the task? Yes, the carriers always rise to the challenge. In direct response to this investigation, the U.S. Postal Service sent us a statement acknowledging there has been a drop-off in service recently nationwide. But they also pointed us to the recent congressional testimony of U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, who defends recent cutbacks at the U.S. Post Office while also insisting the Post Office will step up and will meet the demands this election season. I'm Stephen Stock, NBC Bay Area News.